All right, folks, we're, experience, we're experiencing just a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, our guest speaker is working on his video. Uh, apologize for the slight delay, but we will begin shortly. In the meantime, I want to remind everyone to remain muted uh, until the end of the presentation, and there'll be a time for you can ask questions. And bear with me just a second. Okay. Uh, anyway, like I said, the, the meeting is being recorded and I will have it on our YouTube channel. I will send everyone that registered for the meeting a link to that recording so that you can watch it or share it within your organization. And as soon as we get our technical difficulties worked out, we will begin. Okay, can you see me? There now? we go. <laughs> wow, you know, you'd think after uh, 14 months of isolation, you have the, the video conferencing thing worked out, but when in doubt, switch devices, right? Um, uh, well, well, first of all, I just wanna say thank you very much uh, to the Fayetteville Chamber and, and to you, the Economic Development Group, um, for subjecting yourselves to yet another video conference call. Uh, you have graciously made the assumption that after 14 months of isolation, I have something exciting to say. And, and indeed, I, I think there's some very exciting things happening, uh, which I'd like to, to get to. Uh, you know, incidentally, uh, the time during this quarantine uh, has helped my family and I realize um, why dogs get so excited about something moving outside and uh, going for walks and car rides. And, um, and I think one of my sons even started barking at squirrels. So we're, we're having a good time uh, getting back outside and uh, getting on the bicycles and, and uh, riding the greenway. Um, what, one of the things that uh, my family and I are, are um, very appreciative of is uh, the culture here and, and the outdoor accessibility. Uh, you know, we um, are very much practically COVID transplants from Texas. Uh, we moved uh, to the area three days before Christmas in, in 2019, and, and I had a few weeks before lockdown. Um, uh, this was just long enough for my uh, youngest son to learn to ride bicycles and for all of us to fall in love uh, with the natural beauty and culture of this place. Uh, I'm always amazed at, at what little gem uh, um, of a place I'm going to find uh, uh, just right around the corner and right over the next hill as we're riding around. Uh, we like to park and, and uh, hop off at different sites and, and, and get to experience the different uh, city centers uh, around Northwest Arkansas, but we love Fayetteville. Uh, and I can honestly say it's just a tremendous blessing to be here in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, we came from Lubbock, Texas, uh, where you can watch your dog run away for about three days through the cotton fields. Uh, because it's nice and flat there, and, and then laugh at him uh, for turning around and coming back. Uh, but even though uh, I have, um, I've only seen most of you two-dimensionally, uh, it's, it's, there's wonderful people here, uh, like Stacy Leeds, my pre predecessor, uh, Steve Clark, Sarah Goforth, Mary Beth Brooks, and David Hinton, Meredith Atkins, who's on this call, and, and others both on and off uh, of this call that have welcomed me and helped create a sense of belonging uh, beyond the opportunity uh, that I saw that existed here when we came back out here in, in 2019. Uh, this is an extremely important part in, in my story, uh, which is a part of our story in economic development. And I will get 
uh, get into that a little bit more deeply momentarily. Uh, the mission of the Division of Economic Development is to expand economic opportunity and prosperity in Arkansas for all people through talent development, uh, the deployment of innovative, res innovative research and technology, uh, community engagement and, and placemaking strategies. Uh, to steal a phrase from my biochemistry past, uh, structure equals function. And so I wanna explain what I mean uh, the business units that report uh, or that make up uh, to the, the Division of Economic Development at the University of Arkansas are the Office of Entrepreneurship and Innovation, uh, Technology Ventures, uh, the Arkansas World Trade Center, Arkansas Research and Technology Park, which is managed by uh, UATDF, the University of Arkansas Technology Development Foundation. And I, and I saw uh, Stan Green hop on a second ago. He's our uh, UATDF board chair. And I sure appreciate him and his leadership and being here. Uh, we also have corporate and foundation relations uh, in the Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center uh, here at the University of Arkansas. And so that makes up the division of economic development. And all these groups work in concert uh, towards this mission by working to develop talent commercialize high impact research, often referred to as innovation, or creating a sense of place. Our vision is to create a magnetic innovation ecosystem in Northwest Arkansas that has a global impact. I wanna spend the next few minutes describing uh, how uh, we achieve this vision. And I'll start with uh, innovation since it seems so widely used. Innovation for its part is defined by Merriam-Webster uh, just refers to something new or change in an existing product, service, idea, or, or field of use. One might say that the telephone was an invention, the first cellular phone, either an invention or an innovation, and the first smart mode, smartphone, most certainly an innovation. The University of Arkansas Research uh, Enterprise spends about $170 million a year to create inventions and innovations in addition uh, to what the students create and bring uh, to the University of Arkansas themselves. We work to protect the intellectual capital created in order to license it to an industry partner, either a newly created company or an existing company and give that partner exclusive rights to exploit the intellectual capital for commercial use. If the company is successful, then new products or services enter the market that benefit society and create revenue streams back to the creators in the university. Up until about 10 or 15 years ago, this was the extent of the process executed through the knowledge transfer or knowledge or, or technology transfer functions at most universities. And here at the University of Arkansas, that's house and technology ventures. However, we do not want to be denominational, so to speak, uh, towards only innovation owned by the University of Arkansas. I had um, someone very influential in, in this community ask me, does workforce development report to you? And the answer is no. There is a group at the University of Arkansas that does workforce development in the traditional sense, which is much needed. This group is primarily focused on upskilling and reskilling existing workforce in collaboration with our local industry. Our approach in the Division of Economic uh, Development for talent development is different. The University of Arkansas is, con is constantly training uh, the workforce of the future uh, through the incredible curriculum uh, offerings that we have. Um, but how many of you would agree that there is no substitute for good experience. So for many years, we have had unique expertise in the Walton College of Business through the um, Office of, Innovation, of Entrepreneurship and Innovation to leverage non-curricular programming uh, through the Brewers Hub or the Macmillan Innovation Studio that provides experiential learning opportunities for students that wanted to de-risk a business idea using lean startup or lean launch methodologies. We are working to, uh, working, uh, to expand these programs to graduate students and faculty-led startups and spin-outs. As an, as an aside, we have created new types of agreements 
in technology ventures to facilitate teams participation in these programs, specifically designed to benefit companies that want to license University of Arkansas intellectual property and start and stay in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, this is my shameless plug uh, for, for a talk I hope that David Hinton can give here in the future. Uh, further still, uh, we're working to extract the best practices we observe and integrate those experiential learning techniques back into curriculum across campus. Uh, we call this our integration strategy. Uh, we now have graduate level certificates in entrepreneurship offered in bioengineering, electrical engineering, and another through a program at UAMS. So this is how we are working to develop talent with an incredibly powerful new skill set. The McMillan Innovation Studio is a unique model and, 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 and its own right a powerful asset. And if you're not familiar with it, our local industry partners, uh, like leaders uh, and, and leaders in Walmart, for example, um, bring real world problems to student teams through that program and leverage the student group's creativity. Uh, to solve problems uh, through non-curricular programs, which they can then take back, uh, which the leaders in the, in the industry can then take back as real assets to the company. This, give, this gave us an idea that we really needed to, corp, uh, we needed corporate and foundation relation engagement that looked fundamentally different um, from the way that it has always traditionally functioned through university advancement and sponsored projects. And while some relationships certainly turn into, into those opportunities, many other relationships could be built. And so this is another shameless plug uh, for Cherie Rochelle and Meredith, who I hope will be able to come talk uh, more uh, descriptively about uh, th their new role in, in the Division of Economic Development. And that funding was received um, <clears throat> as part of the $194.7 million award that was received last summer. The Division of Economic Development directly works to assist and provide uh, support to local uh, and all Arkansas-based companies through ASB TDC and the Arkansas World Trade Center, respectively. Uh, many of you probably know uh, Mary Beth Brooks and her growing team uh, are likely heroes to some of you on this call. They've assisted, uh, I know they assisted over 500 companies uh, through the pandemic, and that was just before the, new, the turn of the new year in January, uh, with all manner of support, not the least of which uh, has been gaining access to uh, PPP loans and CARES Act assistance. Others still have benefited from the guidance and assistance of Dan Hendricks and his team at the World Trade Center helping Arkansas-based companies facilitate international trade um, uh, of goods and services uh, through diplomatic relations. Um, this is still more shameless plugs for incredibly talented teammates uh, that can come and share opportunities for you and your companies. Uh, I'd, I'd like to really you know, circle back um, to my thoughts for, about my story today uh, with more information about the opportunity that resides for us in, in South Fayetteville. I also serve as president of uh, UATDF, which I've mentioned, which is the acronym uh, for the University of Arkansas Technology Development Foundation. This entity is a nonprofit corporation uh, that manages all the leasable space at, at the Arkansas Research and Technology Park, or we call it ARTP. I can now use the term all because there will soon be a press release that's describing uh, the successful exit of our first and so far our only uh, private development partner here at ARTP. This is an incredible win for us at UATDF and, and ultimately for the University of Arkansas. Uh, you know, we're committed to building uh, a true economic engine and securing a more vibrant knowledge economy. And ARTP and its partners have had an economic out, uh, output of um, at last review in 2020 was 699 million in the state of Arkansas. Uh, the standing assets at the park now total over 290,000 square feet uh, after nearly $25 million has been invested there since 2003. 
we're almost at full capacity with about 30 different affiliate partners working side by side at various stages of development. Multinational corporations such as Cree and Novozymes conduct cutting edge research there, uh, while JB Hunt is providing student engagement programs that link interns to real world opportunities. The city of Fayetteville identified the development of an innovation district as a key action item in the latest uh, economic development plan. I think that's probably maybe one from 2019 or 2020. I'm not sure it's the latest. And that included um, ARTP. The city believes that the following community assets uh, in development or underway will create the ecosystem for institutions, companies, uh, residents to cluster and connect with startups, uh, incubators and accelerators in a very compact and technically wired mixed use area. And the projects that receive uh, the city investments, and I'm sure you are well aware of them, but the growth nodes, uh, the city of Fayetteville with the adoption of the 2040 land use plan announced its intention to foster catalytic investments at various growth nodes uh, throughout the city. Uh, and two, two growth nodes exist along the corridor connecting downtown and, and ARTP. Uh, the co Cultural Arts Corridor, uh, the corridor uh, that will link the institutions with downtown Fayetteville to the new University of Arkansas Wingate Arts and Design District. Um, this is a, a $31 million uh, capital investment con and that consists of creating um, a new civic plaza urban parkland and, and enhanced streetscape improvements. Uh, there's also the redevelopment of the Southern entryway to the city, which links ARTP and downtown Fayetteville. Uh, the city of uh, Fayetteville recently reclaimed its, pri its primary um, arterial road 71B from the Arkansas Department of Transportation. Uh, future bond projects will be aimed at redeveloping uh, this segment to foster a more pedestrian friendly environment while creating an appropriate environment for further mixed use developments, such as employment opportunities and high density residential. Um, I'm very hopeful that in the near future, we'll be able to announce a plan uh, where, where we're looking to put some uh, soft surface trails and trailheads in and around uh, ARTP, uh, which will really make it a destination, um, a, a, a close, proximity destination to the university for people to come ride uh, just because it's absolutely beautiful and picturesque and it won't inhibit in any way uh, our opportunity to um, build out uh, the remainder of a possible 500,000 square feet of space at ARTP on the acreage that we currently have. ARTP is part of our proud legacy of success uh, to advance a region's distinct industry strengths by uniting its preeminent research universities and private corporations with up and coming talent. In order to better build off homegrown assets, this is key. This is a key part um, of our placemaking strategy. When you think about how the Division of Economic Development is, is a good partner to the city and regional efforts, think about this. As a source of talent, the University of Arkansas is a key component in a city and region's ability to recruit companies. The University of Arkansas's economic development function centers around strategies to mature, attract, and retain talent through opportunities for economic prosperity. Circling back to the vision, we wanna be a magnetic innovation ecosystem. Well, what does that mean? That means that not only do we uh, want to retain talent trained at the University of Arkansas, we want to attract and retain externally trained talent. We accomplish this by integrating entrepreneurial education and venture development best practice across the institution, which I've described, working to converge the University of Arkansas's innovation ecosystem with that of Northwest Arkansas so that we have a seamless transition uh, where the two shall become one, so to speak, uh, the creating and, and thereby creating the sense of place to make it happen with initiatives in and around place, placemaking strategies like at ARTP. I believe that to become a magnetic innovation ecosystem, uh, we must provide opportunities.
opportunities for economic prosperity, either through startups and spin outs or existing companies. We must also offer a secure and safe environment for talented folks to live, work, and play, and maintain a culture that offers community and a sense of belonging. And that culture has been extended to me through many relationships that I've formed with some, some of the folks on this call, and I'm greatly appreciative of that. And um, with that, I wanna make sure that um, I, I say thank you to all of you for your support of the university. Uh, thank you for your efforts um, uh, in, in economic, economic development and being supportive of the institution and its initiatives there. And, and I will say that um, if I were to leave you with a call to action, one of the initiatives that we have been that we have challenged ourselves with is the pursuit of the APOUs, which is the Association of Public Land Grant Universities, IEP designation. So that stands for um, Innovation and Economic Prosperity Designation. And the whole premise of that effort is to be able to create relationships with internal and external stakeholders so that we'll be able to better uh, know what's happening in our community, uh, create constructive mechanisms of measuring that impact, the, the economic impact that the university is having. And then being able to tell our story, that's gonna be a key function of what we're trying to accomplish over the next really three to five years. Um, I believe the advertisement for this uh, presentation included IQ DART, $194.7 million in the breakout of that grant. Uh, that's gonna be an incredible uh, new facility that uh, it resides on campus next to the Nano building. Um, it's gonna fund and endow uh, many new faculty lines and positions. Uh, we're, we're well on our way to, to hiring our inaugural director for IQ DAR on campus. And um, it's, uh, it, it's, just an, it's just an incredible opportunity that's gonna move the needle a long way. Uh, we have to be able to tell the story of that impact, but it's gonna take us a couple of years to build a building and a little while to hire the faculty and a little bit longer to realize uh, some of the traditional um, economic impact metrics that we like to track, such as you know, uh, invention disclosures and patents filed and patents issued and license and revenue generated. Those are things that aren't gonna go away. But in the meantime, what do we do in, in the first five years? And that's largely tasked with our ability to measure what's happening innovatively and tell our story. So if I were to give, leave you with any call to action, we're gonna be forming a couple of uh, working groups, one of internal stakeholders and another of external stakeholders. And I would just ask humbly that um, you, would, you would give us honest and real feedback. Uh, we wanna know uh, what we're doing right and what, we're, uh, what's, and what we're doing wrong, what's not working and try to understand what our gaps are so that we can be a better partner to this community. And so really with that, um, I'll, I'll wrap up and I'll be glad to ask and uh, entertain any questions if uh, anybody has any. All right, folks, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Please feel free to unmute, ask a question, or you can uh, either send an instant message to the group or send it to me and I'll uh, make sure the question gets asked. I couldn't possibly have been that thorough. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll ask, I'll ask one, and uh, hopefully it's not uh, uh, something you can't answer uh, fairly readily on the uh, IQ DAR. Uh, when do you think we'll start to break ground and actually see some uh, dirt move? And well, you know, that's, sure, you know, that's really a John English question. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how far along. I know they're getting making significant progress in uh, design and architectural design and and uh, you know, planning both internally, uh, internally inside the building. 
uh, as to what those needs are going to be. But I don't have a specific answer for you. I would have to I would have to circle back to my colleagues on campus and and try to figure that out. I have a question. <clears throat> if part of your goal is to recruit industry into the area as well as well as to build from within uh, what sort of incentives are there going to be to move uh, here from elsewhere uh, obviously space is one money potentially is one intellectual uh, colleagues another uh, what what sort of comprehensive uh, program would you have to be recruiting companies to move here from elsewhere and would they be small or large companies? Well, that's a great question. And I would say that, you know, we work with um, our colleagues across uh, the, the region to help recruit and assist and, and help uh, companies understand what access to talent they can have. That's not really our primary focus. Our, really, our primary focus within the Division of Economic Development on campus is the talent development piece and creating university startups and spin outs that are drivers of economic growth. And so when you think about new startup companies and as they begin to scale uh, and they go from two or one or two or three people to 10 to 12, uh, those typically provide um, technical and good paying jobs and become attractive opportunities for the talent to stay. Um, externally, and if you're looking at um, trends across universities and, and understanding uh, companies' interest in innovation, university-based innovation ecosystems, uh, uh, companies are spending less and less of their research, of their own research dollars on internal R&D. Um, they're looking more externally uh, uh, on, a, on a regular basis to look for talent and technologies that are being de-risked by um, opportunities and programmatic activities on campus, but then also companies that are drawing down uh, federal funds. So they're using all of that pre-seed uh, uh, non-dilutable capital that's going into those companies on the front end uh, that's making them very attractive acquisitions a little bit later down the road. So one of the other projects that's going on right now is what well, it's called the Arkansas Capital Scan Project. And it is a, an effort uh, that has been um, coordinated uh, through OEI and the Walton College of Business that is um, putting together stakeholders all across the state understanding what money is available to invest in startups at various stages, whether that's pre-seed, seed, series A, on up the, on up the chain, venture capital, um, because we feel like uh, what we can best do is leverage the platform of entrepreneurial education and venture development to create the pipeline of technologies and talent um, if a company gets funded locally or wherever, I'm, I only back up, wherever a company gets funded is generally where it ends up residing. That's one of the reasons why there's so many companies that get piped out. Some of the best technologies get piped out to the East and West Coast because traditionally that's where they've received their venture money. So what we're trying to do is create the whole opportunity here in Arkansas and Northwest Arkansas in particular uh, to, for, for those companies to get created and bedded here uh, in this region. Thank you. All right, folks, I, I know most of you on this call and I don't think any of the folks that I know are shy so if you've got a question, please jump in and, and ask. We'll, uh, we'll give it a couple of more minutes and then we'll let uh, Mr. Snow get on with his day. But I do want you to have ample opportunity to ask any question that you want. I, I don't want to uh, <laughs> be the only one asking questions, but uh, I know there's a lot of literature about clusters of various uh, companies of different types. And uh, 
I was wondering, you know, there are obviously strengths here. Do you have in mind certain clusters of activities that would appropriately begin in this area or, or form the nucleus of what you're trying to create? Yeah, and again, another great question. <clears throat> you know, we have, uh, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of, of examples. Um, you know, high density power electronics, uh, we have a lot of expertise and skill set uh, in and around ART, ARTP in that space. And um, that's certainly a cluster that has been forming over the last few years and is getting more and more mature. Uh, Cree or Wolf Speed is um, a global company. Uh, they um, have recently uh, sold off two of their uh, global divisions and, and they are consolidating their interest in, uh, in, in ARTP and they're, you know, they're here to stay. And that's a wonderful uh, a story of growth and success uh, for, for Fayetteville. Um, as we look to other clustering opportunities, um, those, some of those are emerging. Uh, we feel like there's certainly an opportunity in and around outdoor recreational sports and rec, rec sports space. Uh, we also feel like with um, uh, the opportunities that are planned for um, the whole Health Institute and UAMS and their activities, that um, a bio design program is going to be very effective and influential over the next couple of years. And so we're working uh, towards, uh, towards piloting of that program as well. And then really just, uh, you know, looking at the gaps that we currently have. Uh, and we're looking to uh, build out a program and product development uh, as well. So, uh, you know, there's, there's certainly clusters, but a, a lot of it forms with relationships that people have with other people within the university. Uh, and I, I wanna emphasize that those relationships are very personal. And then the corporate uh, arrangements and engagements happen later. Uh, so we wanna encourage all of those meetings uh, and conversations to have. Uh, you know, I think of it in terms of um, adding to the pool of knowledge. Sometimes, uh, you know, Peter, if, if you and I go to lunch, I may have one agenda and you may have another, but if we talk and, and are nice to each other, we might come out of there with uh, something that looks completely different, but is altogether better than what you and I individually uh, could have conceived. And, and so that's, that's really what we're hoping to do. Uh, you know, iCubeDAR uh, is by design from its inception, designed to fundamentally change how research gets conceived uh, on the university campus. And, and the idea behind it is that the folks that, uh, that get put in place in IQ DAR are looking at their research from a societal benefit through a societal benefit lens. How does this benefit society? And how does this create economic prosperity and impact? And so having, uh, you know, having that influence on our campus over the next couple of years uh, is gonna seed some really interesting things. You know, those clusters, areas of excellence that were named uh, as part of that award, um, some neuroscience and metabolic uh, research, and of course, material science and some others there. When you start you know, drawing the lines between those different expertise, uh, we're not really sure what's gonna come out of that and emerge as a core cluster of opportunity. Uh, we know that some of them are gonna emerge, uh, but we, we, uh, we're, we're not quite sure how to pick the winners on that yet. All right, folks, I'll give you all about another 30 seconds to come up with a question. And, and uh, other than that, uh, if there are no questions, then we will uh, start to wrap up. I do want to take a quick opportunity. Uh, I didn't get to mention this at the beginning, but I do want to take a quick opportunity to thank our sponsor, Cox Business, uh, made this technology possible for us. So we certainly do appreciate their sponsorship and support for these meetings. So is there any final questions? All right, like I said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, hey, David, this is Matt Mazzoni with, actually with Cox Business. How are you today? I'm well, sir. Thank you for asking. 
Hey, I do have a quick question for you. Is you talked about several of the working groups. I was just trying to find out, you know, how are they selected or how are you going to go in the process of, of uh, getting these working groups started? Uh, well, that's a great question. And, and so the folks uh, within the Division of Economic Development that are working on this IEP strategy are myself and Sarah Goforth, uh, Meredith Adkins, who's on this call, and Cherie Rochelle. And uh, so if you have direct connections with any of us, uh, feel free to reach out if you're interested. Uh, we're absolutely interested in, in, in getting to know you and, and what your thoughts are. Uh, and of course, we're going to we're going to solicit people. We're going to reach out if you're if, if we think you're interested or not, and try to get some feedback. But uh, we th those that definitely are willing to participate are, are uh, certainly um, uh, folks we want to get to know and communicate with. So please feel free to email me directly, Matt. Um, I can put my contact information, or I think Meredith, she's on the call. She can drop her contact information in as well. Uh, but mine, uh, mine is just D E S N O W uh, at UARC edu. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, folks, I, I appreciate everybody who took the time out of the day to join us and a special thanks for to David Snow, who is the University of Arkansas's Interim Vice Chancellor for Economic Development. Uh, this is a series. We're going to have a couple more guest speakers from uh, the university, specifically from the uh, Economic Development Division. And again, thanks, uh, special thanks to Cox Business for supporting us and being our sponsor for the technology for today's meeting. With that, one last round, I'm gonna double check chat for a question. No questions, everybody. Thank you again for joining and uh, look out for the uh, next meeting that we'll be hosting. Thank you all, I appreciate it.